All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me preface this tutorial by saying I don't use InDesign much. I don't know InDesign well. Okay, so there's the confession. Uh, when I was doing page layout and stuff, this was back in page maker days. So this was quite some time ago. And honestly, um, I'm just not doing larger length things. So I generally just do my one page stuff in Illustrator. So that's the disclaimer. Okay, I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. However, what I am darn good at is solving problems, and I quite enjoy solving problems. And I had a customer who wrote and said, you know, in Kelly's tutorial, she's doing this thing where she just hits Alt E and it's putting in a accented E, but I'm not, I'm, that's not working for me. And, uh, you know, I sent a list of Google links, you know, and it's so funny because I reached out to my InDesign people. I did a quick search on Adobe Press and it looked like there were a lot of different things going on there. And uh, let me show you my solution, okay? Because this is this can be frustrating. And the real message here is something I learned at ISTE many years ago, and that is never surrender to an animate object. Because InDesign almost beat me, but I refused to give up. So here's what I did. InDesign accent marks. You can see that it's right there, right? That's what I typed in. So I watched this first video, and this is from Adobe. And what it said was, well, you use the glyphs panel, right? That's how you do it. And so I went in InDesign, and you can do it. You can go here to Window, type in Tables, and Glyphs. And then and you can just kind of search down for it. You can see that I found it here, and you can just kind of uh, oh, you double click it and it'll drop it in there, but it's the wrong size and doesn't look as cute as I want it to because I want it to look super cute. And Kelly did it in her dog on video. So I knew there had to be a way. So uh, back to the interwebs, right? And students, this is why I'm recording this video in its entirety, talking about the story here, because the most important message here is research. Okay, going to the first thing, and this is what a lot of students do right? You go to the first thing and then you give up. Oh, that didn't help. The internet doesn't know. Well, you know, that's not researching. That's just searching. Research means, if you think about the word, search again, right? If I re-sew something, I sew it again. If I reapply the paint, I apply the paint again. So I'm going to research. So I looked here at these um, forums and really honestly skimmed them pretty fast because forums aren't as helpful sometimes. But I did find this one from InDesign Secrets, and I said, ooh, Secrets, that sounds super fun. Uh, so I clicked there, and when I read this article, this jumped out at me right here. On both Windows and Mac, the international English keyboard setting allows you to invoke these diacritics. I guess that's what they're called, diacritics. And so I said, man, I don't, you know, I don't think I know about that international English keyboard. So what I did was I opened another tab, right? Just in case this wasn't the solution. And I typed my version of Windows, International Keyboard. And uh, these top little things often don't work. And to be honest with you though, I did try this first and it didn't work right. But then I went to this one because it says Windows 10 right in it. And these instructions, told me how to invoke this keyboard, right? This guy right here, look, he said, I finally found it. So this is a common problem that everybody has. And here's what you do. You go to settings from the Windows icon. Boom, settings. And then you type, uh, and then you go to time and language. Time and language. And then you do region and language. And then, so, and I got confused here. It says, uh, you should see English, United States, assuming you're in the US, click on it and a button labeled options appears. And this is the part that I missed. So I clicked this. First, I tried to go to add a language. It wasn't there. But then I just did what the instruction said. I clicked this and look, options. So I clicked that and I clicked add a keyboard and I scrolled down, boom, United States International QWERTY. So I added that. And, uh, and I still didn't know how to, uh, how to do it, right? So, and I'm gonna leave this open just in case we need this again, because I honestly can't remember how I did this, because I did it on a different computer before. Option button, now you see an option add a keyboard, blah, 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 blah. Okay, oh yeah, and then, look at this, click to add it in your language bar, which I didn't know what the heck that was, and it said should be in the system tray, right? Which I know is down here, and I noticed this thing, which was new. So I clicked that, 
<gasps> and I see Inter English International. Boom. I clicked that. I come in here and I did Alt E and it didn't work. So I did shoot. I did uh, the other side of the keyboard, Alt E. Oh, and I got it, right? So, but there was too little. So I did Shift Alt E and boom, I nailed it. So, and I'm okay. So I was super excited about this. And if you're not excited, you do not know the joys of troubleshooting and coming up with a solution. But anyway, that's how I found it. And uh, I wanted to give you guys this solution, right? And I'll make another quick video that will go on the InDesign page. But honestly, I think this video with the details on how I kind of like worked through that process is going to be much more helpful and I think more important for you guys to know. Here's a couple notes, okay, from Uncle Rob. When I would talk to my students in the classroom, I'd always have these Uncle Rob talks. And this is like life lessons. Number one, never surrender to an inanimate object. Right, and I stole that from some guy named Howie that did this presentation called Toys R Us at ISTE many years ago. So Howie, if you're out there, thank you. I love it. Uh, and then the second thing is, don't forget to research, okay? And don't forget to let your search take you from kind of one place to another because I could have kept going down this thing and said, nope, it's not in there, right? If I looked too quickly or I didn't quite dig in enough, and, I, and you know, there were a couple of different things I found that were cool. Uh, and I think I even went down to a couple other here before I came back. There was something about this article just, and I guess part of it was just knowing indesignsecrets.com sounded like a pretty reliable website. Uh, so I checked that one and, uh, and that's how I, I kind of found it, but it wasn't quick and it wasn't easy, but it was worth it. And I feel, I feel, uh, I don't know what it feels like to win the Super Bowl, but this is the nerd equivalent of winning the Super Bowl. So boom, I just did that. All right, this is Rob Schwartz. I'm out of here. I'm going to go celebrate because I won. Schwartz won computers zero on the uh, InDesign fancy little marks over the E contest.